Hi guys, Jill from High Water here. Uh, today we're talking about how to properly set up your fly line and how to attach your backing to your fly line and the proper knots that go in between those connections. This is a really, really important part of the whole fly line setup because ultimately those are your tension points, those are the points that can see failure. A lot of the times too here in the shop we do see a lot of knots that maybe aren't the best or aren't the strongest and we're just going to go over a couple of them to really make sure that your outfit is strong and it's stable and it works. So we got 20 pound orange backing here that we're going to put on this Islander LX 3.6 and what I'm going to do is a uni knot here. There's a couple different knots that you can do for your backing to the spool directly. The arbor knot is one and the uni knot is another. Usually both a slip knot that's going to slide down and connect and really grab onto the spool. I like the uni knot because it tends to be easy, it tends to be quick, and it's a very effective knot in really cinching down really, really well. So what we do is we take our line and our backing off our spool, we make a big knot, double it up, make one loop so you have the two pieces over top of themselves. With that tag end you're going to wrap through the main line and the loop, wrapping approximately five to eight times through. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cinch it all up tight so it's nice and stacked and then once again pull that right down nice and tight and cut off the tag end and you have your backing attached to your spool. So when we're putting on backing, how much backing do you put on? That's probably the biggest question that we need to know here. Uh, this is a 3.6 size LX reel from Islander. So this is going to be used in applications for salmon, for steelhead, maybe for salt water. So we're generally going to be putting on probably a seven or an eight weight size line. Now, making sure that the reel is appropriate for the size line, you also have to make sure you have the appropriate amount of backing. Uh, 20 or 30 pound backing is also going to make a difference between how much goes on there and how much can fit. Generally, if you're putting on an eight weight line uh, and you're targeting, say, salmon or steelhead locally, we'd like to put on anywhere from 120 to about 150 yards. That would probably be ample. Uh, depending on the reel, you might get more than that, but 120 minimum would be what we would like to put on. Alright, so once you have your appropriate amount of backing on there, um, you can just cut the line and we can start on the next step. One thing that's very, very important when putting backing on um, lines, especially with a Dacron backing or especially like a gel spun backing, is to make sure it's on tightly. That's a huge factor. You don't want the line cutting under itself at any point or you running into an issue later on when you do hook a fish and you have the fish flying out. Make sure it's tight and make sure it's on evenly. A nice, consistent back and forth, get that line laid out so it's not cutting into itself or cutting under itself is very, very important. So once you got your backing on there and you're ready to attach your line, there's a couple different options we have. Very common is the nail knot from the fly line to the backing. Uh, another option is the Albright knot. I do like the Albright knot as an alternative because it does double over on itself. It tends to grab a little bit more and you don't run as much of a risk of stripping the fly line from its core at that point. Uh, Albright is a little bit more difficult than a nail knot. However, you don't need the use of a tool, um, but I do believe it is a stronger knot. I also like to use generally a little bit of UV knot sense on the back end of that just to help cure everything, but we'll show that as we go. So the Albright knot uh, doubles over on the fly line end. If you don't have a loop already on the end of your fly line, you can use this knot. So what I do, create a doubled over loop just like that. Give yourself quite a bit of space. You take your backing and you feed it through the loop. Then you're going to proceed to wrap forward and you're going to wrap a couple times maintaining tightness on the knot itself. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven is usually what I do. Pinch that. Your tag end is going to go back through the loop. Then what you're going to do is you're going to pinch and you're going to pull this end forward and cinch it up. And you're going to try and get your knot nice and tight and small there. Then you're going to pull your tag end and your main line end and you're going to pull and you're going to cinch that right down. 
Once again, the nice part about this knot is that it's doubling over on two pieces of the line, not just one. So it really tends to grab and to bind. It also creates a nice small knot without anything uh, getting in the way or getting hooked on the guides. So then what we do is we trim nice and close on these guys. Trim it up. A little bit of UV glue on there. We'll just set the knot. It'll just keep it from coming undone. Make it a little bit smoother as well. Get out your UV light. Hit it with that. Let it cure for a couple seconds and you'll be done. The knot sense isn't necessary, but it is a good uh, applicant on pretty much any knot just to really secure and to hold that and to smooth it out as well. Also making sure that if you didn't cinch it down well enough, um, which you really should try to, that it doesn't slip out or anything like that as well. So just a couple seconds with that knot and you're done. There's your Albright knot. One thing that's very important when you're taking fly line off, and we do see it commonly, is fly line is not designed to come off the spool this way. The fly line is designed to come off straight. If you pull it off from the side, you can incorporate a twist into the fly line, which can ultimately result in your line getting twisted and your casting performance just not being anywhere near where you want it to be. Uh, machines and shops are great because the line always goes straight on and straight off. Always make sure that your fly line is going straight on and straight off when you are putting it, your setup together. This is imperative and extremely important uh, to how the performance of the line is going to be. You don't want to add in any other twist into your line if you don't have to. So just go slow, applying you know, pressure on it, just making sure that it's not wrapping or twisting and just keeping it nice and even. If you got a buddy that can hold on to your spool, just apply a little bit of tension on there to keep it all nice and tight. Once again, just even back and forth on there. And if you applied the right amount of backing, you should end up with a relatively perfect fit. So once that's on there, there you go. Perfect fit. And that's pretty much it how to put your backing and your fly line on your fly reel. It's very important to know these simple steps, even though it doesn't seem like much, uh, to make sure that you don't have a failure out in the field. Make sure your knots are good, that you have the proper knots, and to really be comfortable with your gear and your setup out there. If your setup isn't working well, you're probably gonna encounter a problem at some point. If you have any more questions or just would like to talk about how to set up your fly reel, uh, how your line should go on, what backing you should use, how much backing you should use, feel free to stop by the shop anytime or visit our website, www.highwatertackle.com.